Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 11th of March. Two JEM terrorists neutralized in an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. No decision yet on US force posture in Afghanistan, says Secretary of State Antony Blinken. And Hindus across India throng temples on Mahashivratri festival. And now for all the details. Security forces on Thursday neutralized two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based jesh e mohammed terror outfit in an encounter in Anantnag district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. The encounter broke out on Wednesday night as a cordon and search operation was launched in Kadipura village in Anantnag based on specific inputs. A senior police official said the operation had to be initially suspended as it grew dark. However, all roads leading to the site were sealed and the two terrorists were gunned down when the fire resumed early in the morning. Search operations were still underway in the area till the last reports came in. This came as earlier on Tuesday, security forces gunned down Al Badr terror outfit chief Ghani Khwaja in Sopor town. The police, army, CRP, milke cordon dal liya. Initial mein fighting hua, fir raat bhar jo ki andhera ho gaya tha, to ham log operation ko suspend kar diye. Aaj early morning fir se fighting resume hua. Encounter mein do terrorist maar gaye, Jish Mahmud ke. Indian states of Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Punjab, among others, continue to report rapid increase in daily new COVID-19 cases amid the country's second phase of vaccination drive against the deadly infection. Citing the rise in new cases, authorities in worst-affected Maharashtra has even announced a complete lockdown in its Nagpur district from March 15th to 21. Several Indian states, including Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Punjab, among others, continue to record high in daily new COVID-19 cases, India's Health Ministry data showed. Citing the increase in infection cases, government in the worst affected state of Maharashtra has imposed a week-long lockdown in Nagpur district starting from March 15 till March 21. However, essential services will continue to remain functional as normal, the authorities said on Thursday. कल की स्थिति न देखने के बाद आज मुझे यह कठोर निर्णय लेना पड़ रहा है इस निर्णय में नागपुर शहर में बढ़ती हुई तेजी से कोरोना बारितों की संख्या देखते हुए 15 मार्च से 21 मार्च तक के शहर में पूर्णता लॉकडाउन घोषित किया जा रहा है Meanwhile, the central government has ramped up the vaccination drive against the deadly virus across the country with the second phase launched earlier this month. According to the government, India has done over 24 million vaccinations so far. Acceleration in the vaccination drive has been achieved with active collaboration of private facilities. Moving on. A European think tank has urged the United Nations to hold Pakistan accountable for promoting terrorism and failing to live up to its legal and moral obligations during the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva. A research analyst raised concern over Pakistan's double-edged approach towards terrorist activities on its soil. A European think tank during an intervention at the ongoing 46th UNHRC session in Geneva on Wednesday urged the United Nations to hold Pakistan accountable for promoting terrorism and failing to live up to its legal and moral obligations. Arun Meghana, a research analyst at EFSAS, the European Foundation for South Asian Studies, expressed concern that in 2019 and 2020, Following growing diplomatic pressure and seemingly not driven by a genuine attempt to combat terrorism, Pakistan claimed to have arrested Hafiz Saeed and Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, 
two UN designated terrorists. These sham arrests exemplify Pakistan's double-edged approach towards terrorist activities on its soil, he said. These sham arrests exemplify Pakistan's double-edged approach towards terrorist activities. Terrorism is patronized when strategically useful, but opposed when it targets Pakistani interests. This is most apparent in Afghanistan, where Pakistan will now have to adapt at least partially to Taliban-led government. An end to violence is unlikely to materialize with the peace agreement. Rather, the US Taliban deal has shifted the focus towards Pakistan as a safe haven for even more terrorists and terrorist organizations. The Global Terror Watchdog Financial Action Task Force last month announced that Pakistan will continue to remain on its grey list due to failure to comply with all the points of a plan of action set by it to combat terror financing. The FATF said there had been serious deficiency on the part of Pakistan in checking terror financing. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan is witnessing record high in daily coronavirus cases and seems to be heading towards a third wave of the virus, data suggests. The rise in the infection cases comes as the country started COVID-19 vaccination drive for citizens above 60 years of age on Wednesday. Pakistan on Thursday reported 2,258 cases in the last 24 hours, marking the first time the country has reported over 2,000 infections since January. Citing the rise in the infection cases, Pakistan on Wednesday announced a raft of new measures to contain the spread. The new restrictions include closing educational institutions in certain cities and withdrawing permissions to resume indoor weddings, dine-in services, cinemas and shrines. This comes at a time when Pakistan has also rolled out a COVID-19 vaccination drive for citizens above 60 years of age. Senior citizens who are above 60 years old, उनको भी वैक्सीनेशन लगाने का सिलसिला शुरू हो चुका है जो कि 500 के बाद 500 से से ज्यादा हम वैक्सीनेशन अब अब सिटी सीनियर सिटीजन को लगा चुके हैं अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह उनमें भी कोई भी अभी तक कोई रिएक्शन का कोई केस नोट नहीं किया गया है पाकिस्तान हैज नॉट सिक्योर्ड एनी सप्लाईज फ्रॉम वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरर्स एंड इज लार्जली डिपेंडिंग ऑन द जीएवीआई डब्ल्यूएचओ कोवैक्स इनिशिएटिव फॉर पुअर नेशंस एंड डोनेशंस फ्रॉम इट्स ओल्ड एलआय चाइना Ahead of the May 1 deadline for a final withdrawal of U.S. troops, is stipulated in a Taliban U.S. deal last year, Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said the Biden administration is currently reviewing its Afghanistan policy and has so far not made any decision on the American force posture in the war-torn country. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Wednesday told the House Committee on Foreign Affairs that the United States so far has not made a decision on the May 1 deadline for the withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. The new U.S. administration of President Joe Biden has decided to review the Doha deal the Trump administration had signed with the Taliban in February 2020. The deal provided for the withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan, ending Washington's 18-year war in the country. We're reviewing our own uh, troop posture, uh, including the May 1st deadline. Uh, we haven't made any decisions yet uh, about that, uh, and we want to see where this, uh, this effort goes to actually get the parties to engage in a meaningful way. The Taliban made other commitments uh, when it comes to reducing violence. Blinken said the U.S. is engaged in a diplomatic effort to try to drive the warring parties to the table meaningfully on a peaceful future for Afghanistan and enlisting the U.N. and regional neighbors. Blinken had last week proposed in a letter to Afghan leaders that a senior-level meeting take place in the coming weeks in Turkey. The proposed U.N.-led conference on Afghan peace in Turkey may take place on March 27, reports suggest. The Afghan government also has not commented on the Turkey conference. More on news from Afghanistan. In 2012, due to insecurity and unemployment in Afghanistan, Rasul Rizai moved to Russia as he tried to claim asylum there. But his claim rejected, Rizai returned home and set up a mushroom farm. Today, he brings in about $58 a day from his mushrooms and is optimistic about his future. Rasul Rizai gently picks oyster mushrooms at his farm in Afghanistan's capital of Kabul 
placing them into a basket, just a handful of approximately 30 kilograms he supplies to markets every day. Rezai set up his farm about two years ago after unsuccessfully attempting to claim asylum in Europe. He learned how to grow mushrooms during his stay in Russia. It was around the same time more than 1 million migrants were attempting to do the same, causing the worst migrant crisis Europe had seen since World War II. His claim rejected, Rezai returned to Afghanistan and initially became a shopkeeper until the memory of mushroom farming returned. در سال 2012 ما از افغانستان به علت ناامنی و بیکاری ما از افغانستان مهاجرت کردیم به کشور روسیه و در شهر مسکو و اونجا ما کار میکردیم دو سال اول ما در یک رستوران بودیم و اونجا ما کار میکردیم کار رستوران داری بود به خاطر که کارش بسیار سخت بود ما از طریق یکی از دوستان معرفی شدیم به یک از فارمای سمارخ در کشور در کشور روسیه بود ما معرفی شدیم و اونجا رفتیم کار کردیم همونجا که کار کردیم ما امی از طریق لابراتوار امی که تخم سمارخ جور میکنه همونجا ما یاد گرفت رزای کرنتلی برینگز ان اباوت 58 یو اس دالرز ا دی اند هی از اپتیمیستیک اباوت هیز فیوچر هی سید مشروم گروئنگ پیکت اپ دورینگ دی کرونا وایرس پاندیمیک ویت پیپل لوکینگ ٹو گیٹ انٹو مشروم فارمنگ امیت شاٹرڈ بزنسز رزایز الٹیمیٹ ہوپ is to encourage other farmers to grow mushrooms instead of the lucrative poppy and in turn improve the country's public image. In news from Sri Lanka, a three-day parliamentary debate on the report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the Easter Sunday attack in Sri Lanka commenced on Wednesday in the parliament. The report was taken up for debate as an adjournment motion tabled by the ruling party. During the debate, Minister of Public Security, retired Rear Admiral Sarat Virasikara, revealed a number of details about the attack. According to the minister, so far 676 people have been arrested in connection with the 21st April 2019 Easter Sunday attack in Sri Lanka, although 408 people have been released on bail. Investigations into them are still ongoing. Leader of the House Dinesh Gunavardhana earlier said two other dates in the third week have been fixed for the debate. Islamic extremist suicide killers targeted three tourist hotels and three churches, which killed more than 290 people and injured nearly 500. Devout Hindus across India on Thursday offered special prayers at various temples marking Mahashivratri festival, the wedding anniversary of Lord Shiva with his consort Parvati. The festival also coincided with the beginning of Kumbh Fair, the world's largest religious gathering. Devotees across India on Thursday celebrated the Hindu festival of Mahashivratri, marking the wedding anniversary of Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, with his consort Parvati. To mark the day, idols of Lord Shiva were decorated with alluring flowers and other items at various temples across the country. Devotees also offered flowers, leaves, water and milk to Shiva Linga, a fellow's representation of Lord Shiva and chanted prayers in temples. On this day, devotees also celebrate the festival by fasting. Mangla Arati ke pashat, jo darshan bhagwan bhakta log abha kar karein hai, wo darshan praram ho gaya hai, sabhi bhakta darshan kar raha hai. Ab 24 ghante bhagwan ko satat jal dhara aur dudhak dhara bhagwan pe chadegi. Meanwhile, coinciding with Mahashivratri, the largest religious gathering on earth, the Kumbh Fair began with devotees taking holy dip in the river Ganges in Haridwar to seek salvation from the cycle of life and death. Kumbh Festival is an eight-week-long affair during which millions of people, including foreign visitors, flock to India to experience the rich culture and tradition of the country. But due to COVID-19 pandemic, the fair this year is expected to host less number of visitors than usual. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button